I, I did not hold your hand. If I did, I would admit that and, and apologise to my girlfriend. I'd be like, look, you know what, we're all in Vegas enjoying ourselves and I'd Wait, say so sorry. Wait, so did he hold your hand or did he try to hold your hand? Welcome to Watch Mojo UK. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most awkward made in Chelsea dinner parties. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at some of the scripted reality show's funniest and most cringe-inducing dinner party moments. What's been your favourite MIC arguments? Number 10. You're quite boring Double dates can be awkward, especially with people you don't particularly like. But in this episode from 2018, Sam Prince found a surefire way to make the situation worse. First, he invited Mimi and Ben along as a buffer against boredom, but he didn't give them much of a chance to work their magic. It's like, I find you guys quite boring. <laughs> Instead, he announced to the table that he found Harry and Melissa quite boring before the mains were even on the table. Harry is annoyed, and poor Melissa, who Sam seems intent on upsetting, is naturally hurt and confused. So why do you feel awkward? Because I just, I just did. I mean, me, Melissa came out with us the other night, and she didn't actually say a word, so I just felt a little awkward about that. Ben wishes they would all get along, but no one's interested in what Ben thinks. This is all backfiring Sam, on you, dude. What do you not voiced bring this on pathetic. me. That is not right. Like, Don't do that. Number 9. The Covid Country House Dinner Back in the bubble stage of lockdown, the scripted reality show packed its young cast off on staycations. No one likes to be locked up together for too long, but this lot appeared handpicked to create maximum drama. At this alfresco dinner, Maver calls out Emily for repeating something back to James that she told her in confidence. Olivia, though, accuses Maver of a similar transgression. Then Verity gets upset when she finds out that Olivia has fallen for Tristan. Liv's her friend, Tristan's her ex, and Verity thinks he should be off limits. Liv says she's sick of putting herself last, and since Verity's happy and with new beau Charlie, why should she care? It all gets a bit shouty and emotional. Number 8. Ryan Gets Involved the Made in Chelsea types are a niche group, and cast members who originate from outside of the clique occasionally struggle to adjust to their ways. Ryan is a case in point. He entered the show as Louise's personal trainer and never quite got the hang of certain behaviours. For example, why you're expected to be friendly with your girlfriend's ex. In this case, he's getting angry at Olivia for messing Digby around. But haven't, haven't you guys been hooking up? Liv casually explains that she's still sleeping with a broken-hearted Digby despite not wanting to be with him anymore. Ryan doesn't think that that's okay and accuses her of manipulative behaviour, but everyone else around the table would rather let the subject lie. It's none of Ryan's business, of course. I can just see right through you. You're very toxic and manipulative about what's going on here. It's horrible. What is your problem? It's not a problem, mate. Number seven, James has exhausted all of his compassion. So have yeah. you, like, sorted things out with Miles yet? No, not yet. Made in Chelsea's friendship bust-ups are always more interesting when the people involved are real friends. In other words, they already had a relationship outside of the show. And that's the case here. Miles thinks his one-time best mate has changed. He suggests that now James is getting some female attention, he's becoming arrogant. But, um, yeah, I have been sad in my own way, and I have been aggressive towards you. Oh, this is lovely in a way. I can't quite imagine you being sad. James is angry to discover that Miles has been bitching behind his back and assumes that he's just jealous. The tension feels real and based on a shared history, which makes it all the more uncomfortable for the people around the table, although that doesn't stop them getting involved. The pettiness and the melodrama make this one a treat for the viewer. He's getting frustrated now and it's... There's and not many getting... other ways I can play it. I've exhausted all of my compassion. What? Oh my gosh. Number six, Mitten gets dropped in it. Rich, so he was coming on to her a little bit. Not coming on, but he's being really, like, touchy-feely. That's coming on, mate. Alex Mitten is possibly one of the most shameless characters ever to appear in the show. Who can forget his righteous indignation when Spencer let on about the infamous orgy? 
But his friendship with Jamie seemed legit. I said something to you on the beach that was private between me and you. And then you went and told all the girls who are obviously going to go and tell Frankie. However, during a dinner argument in the south of France, Sam repeated some gossip that challenged Mitten's friend credentials. Sam had been getting it in the neck from Jamie, so to deflate the heat, he announced to the table that Mitten had tried it on with Frankie, Jamie's then girlfriend. The You're sitting next to a man who tried it on with your girlfriend? Huh? Yeah, but yeah, I'm the asshole. Jamie demands to know the source of Sam's information. He then discovers that the rumor came from Frankie herself. This is big. Well, I kind of want to clear it up because I don't want you thinking that I would do that. Sam, why are you saying this? Because that's what I heard. No, I, oh, who, I who, who said that? Mitten attempts some damage control, but it's too late. The cat is out of the bag. Number five. What happened in Vegas? Do you want me to swap seats with you? Swap seats? Yeah. yeah oh, God, no. Seats. You're already comfortable. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm not that comfortable, honestly. I'm far from comfortable. <laughs> By all means, you can sit here. No, no, no. Please, please, no. The mantra of the Chelsea boy is deny, deny, deny. But sometimes the evidence is difficult to ignore, especially when what happened in Vegas refuses to stay there. When American girl Diana shows up for dinner, you know that the tea is about to be spilled. Like, what was said that you think was uncomfortable? Because that's news to me. You're like asking me if you had been there alone and Sam wasn't with you, would I have been interested in you? I don't think that I would have said something like that having a girlfriend. Harry Barron was already living with Melissa when he visited Sin City. Things were also starting to get serious between Sam and Habs. But this doesn't appear to have stopped either boy from trying his luck with Diana. Harry gets held to account first, then the tables turn on Sam. Jamie, who issued Diana's invite, is thoroughly enjoying himself. But with hindsight, perhaps he had an ulterior motive for messing with Sam and Hab's relationship. Um, and he said that there was someone that he was seeing but not exclusive with. Number four, Mark versus Ollie. To understand the context of this dinner party, you must cast your mind back to series 10, when Ollie Locke was still in the closet and pursuing Tiffany Watson. He was buying her flowers when he bumped into his love rival, Sam Thompson, who was doing likewise. The comic scene was witnessed by Mark Francis, who had a good laugh about it with Victoria. Unfortunately, they did this in front of Toph, who repeated the nastiest bits back to Ollie. Between you and Have you ever had a fight? Which is weird. Never. Ollie then confronted Mark over the dinner table, and it all got a bit heated. No, I, and as did you not have anything to do with it, so Rosie's talking up, about so you Miranda Victoria. Don't have I said say anything to Victoria. I quite like Victoria. Mark is very rarely in the middle of the drama, but this time there was no escaping it. To be fair, though, the comments did mostly come from Victoria. Well, let's just try and enjoy Christmas. Number three, poor Pablo. The privileged life of Chelsea's 20-somethings makes for great popcorn TV. Tiff, that was brave. Huh? Why, why are you doing this? You know doing I'm what? Here. You know I'm here, like... But every so often, it leaves a bad taste in the mouth. In this cringe-inducing Ibiza episode, Sam and Tiffany had recently broken up, but both brought dates to dinner. Tiff's plus one is Pablo, a tall, handsome Spaniard. Sam is fuming and proceeds to take it out on the bemused stranger. You've just done, gone, done the exact same thing. No, I <laughs> Is this the same, Liv? No, because Pablo's not a friend of yours. He immediately accuses Pablo of serving him a drink at Ocean Beach. The implication is that Tiffany is screwing around with the staff. The dinner descends into a slanging match with a heavy dose of double standards. Julius sticks his oar in for reasons unknown, and Pablo proves that he's the only person at the table with an ounce of class. Hey, by the way, I'm bringing a guy. What are you That's talking about? You. you know what? I'm not Sam's best friend. Number two, why is everyone up in Lucy Watson's grill? In one of Maiden Chelsea's most memorable sound bites, Lucy Watson posed the immortal question, why is everyone up in my grill? And why indeed? Purportedly, it was because she'd rejected Jamie and brought someone else to dinner instead. Jamie, is that the same as you going from Binky to Lucy? No, Binky... Well, actually, I, I, that no, is a valid the, point, Jamie. Like, I, I love you to bits, but you did do exactly the same. No, 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 no,
was being splashed. To make things worse, she'd chosen Andy, who Spencer hated because he previously tried it on with his ex Louise. What does any of this have to do with Spencer? Well, nothing really, but he'd had a drink and appeared to be in a bullying mood. Why is everyone getting up on my grill? No one's getting in your grill. No, like, listen, okay. I'm, I'm back to your Number one, Victoria's Christmas-themed insults. Sophie, can you pass me the cheese? Oh, of course. It's quite smelly, though. Oh my god, it smells as bad as Beauty's breath does. What's Christmas dinner without an argument? Presumably, that's what the producers were thinking when they told Victoria to start some drama. Or maybe she just felt like announcing to the room that Lucy's breath smelt like cheese. Either way, the resulting argument was memorable TV. She has been calling Victoria a prostitute. At least I said it was expensive. I'm just defending my friend. The insults started flying and poor Cheska got hit the hardest. Victoria aimed a particularly vicious, expletive-laden bit of abuse in her direction. But at least it was festive. Stop being a Open your fat mouth, you fat turkey. The room went silent, and we all knew that she'd taken it too far. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.